it seems that Ford has recognized Tesla's competence in building out an amazing charging network and technology. It was quite unexpected as Ford and Tesla announced to collaborate in the charging network space. Um, the financial media didn't know how to react to the news, trying to find some negatives in the announcement. So welcome back to my channel where I give you the latest Tesla news. This, this announcement we think will really help our EV customers have a, a much better experience. You know, and it, it, it was surprising just from the perspective that you all are rivals, I don't know if you want to call respectful rivals, frenemies, something yeah. along those lines. How, how did this deal come, come about? What happened? We've been actually working on it for a couple of years. You know, we know that charging, we're number two in EV sales in the U.S. behind Tesla. And we know charging is a really big deal for our customers and adoption. And we're now scaling, we're like basically doubling our EV capacity this year. And, and we're going to get to two million in a couple of years. So this is a big deal for, for the company and, and for our customers. And we have about 10,000 fast chargers now. This is going to double that. So 22,000 fast work of fast charging in the country for any brand, and, and that's why we were interested in it. Uh, we also like their, their, like their locations. We like their charging technology. It works really well as well. So in 25, we're going to put their plug on our vehicle. Yeah, Jim, I have to say, as a consumer, I think it's great. I, I love the idea of some sort of standardization or moving towards standardization yes. in the industry. No consumer wants to get stuck. Feeling like, oh, I finally found a charging station, but guess what? I can't use it. And you probably need a lot more of this to, to really beef up adoption of EVs across the country. Um, what I think is interesting about this is, you know, this is, if you went back to the VHS Betamax comparison on all these mm -hmm. things, VHS eventually won out. You are choosing to go with Tesla, which has been uh, riding with the NACS standard. That versus the CCS standard that the Biden administration and most of the U.S. automakers, EV makers, have, have been pushing. Why, why Tesla? Why this standard? And do you think by you and Tesla teaming up together, you kind of win over and can change what's going to be the standard? It's a great question. So we believe that customers should have, as you said, the option of using either standard. And with adopters, ad adapters and software, we could do that both. But we really like the Tesla standard from a customer standpoint. When you look at how easy it is to plug in, if you drop the core, the, the Tesla system is more robust. Um, the other standard is great, and we'll have adapters for that. But but we also really love the locations. Like, I, I remember I was going on vacation with my kids. My kids kept saying, hey, Dad, can we stop there? That's one of those Tesla supercharging. I was like, no, kids, we're going to go over here behind this building. Um, and, you know, so... It's it's a it's a bet for our customers, and we want our customers to be able to use both systems actually with adapters. Jim, uh, long term, when you think about this this friends enemy frenemy situation, mm -hmm. if Tesla becomes that standard, is that good or bad for you? I mean, as you as you try to evaluate and think through what that means over time. Yeah, we think it's it's good for us because we're going to have the Ford Pass software. So people don't have to leave the Ford Pass software that they use for charging at their home or, or control unlock the vehicle or use the phone as a key. When they go use the Tesla supercharger, they're still using Ford. We were right. very concerned if they had to switch over to use that Tesla software, but that was part of the deal. And it, it was a deal breaker for us for the reason right. you mentioned. Of course, Tesla will continue to build out their charging infrastructure, which might take some time. With uh, this new arrangement of Tesla and Ford, Ford has increased in sales and has a much better outlook for the future. Now, Tesla has improved their charging network to enable the time it takes to charge a vehicle. These charging stations are twice as fast, so Tesla owners do not need to be worried about waiting behind a F-150. Also, Ford only gets access to certain charging stations since Tesla has analyzed which locations are less busy to 
uh, provide access to other car manufacturers. Busy locations are Tesla-only charging stations. While well, the partnership was announced on Twitter Spaces by Elon Musk and Jim Farley, Ford had to make this decision. Ford did not do well in Ford's last earnings call. So it is pretty safe to say that additional spending might not be wise at the moment. By using Tesla charging technology, Ford can focus on their future design. The future is in electric vehicles. Now collaborating with Tesla will only speed up this procedure. Tesla is the only charging station that can live up to the task in increasing charging stations in the US. While many companies are trying to implement electric vehicles while losing money, it could be only wise to follow Ford's pursuit to collaborate with Tesla and implementing Tesla charging networks. Gerber Kawasaki CEO Ross Gerber, a Tesla shareholder, and former Ford CEO, CNBC contributor Mark Fields, Gentlemen, good morning to both of you. Mark, how surprised were you about this collaboration? Well, it's a bit surprising, but it's also very, very practical by the Ford team. I mean, they have uh, these products in the marketplace. They have these products coming. And listen, the bottom line is they needed access, widespread access to, uh, to superchargers. And with Tesla having uh, the most superchargers out there, actually a two-to-one ratio over the other standard, uh, it made it pretty simple for Ford to say, you know what, I'm not going to spend the time building the own network. Let's take advantage of the Tesla one. It has good reliability, good locations, and it takes one of the inhibitors or impediments away from customers as they think about EVs. Ross, as a Tesla shareholder, do you like it? I love it. I, I think it's just a wonderful move by Tesla because you have to look at the business as different sections. And Tesla charging is one of the most important and valuable parts of Tesla today because the network works so well compared to the competitors. So Ford is making a super smart move by plugging into the network. And for Tesla, they're going to get all this fee revenue from Ford users now joining the Tesla supercharging network, which I think will end up being very profitable for Tesla. Now, it will be a tough choice with many approaching bankruptcy in these current economic conditions. Russ Gerber and Mark Fields gave their opinion. Well, listen, I think there's a number of advantages for Tesla. First off, it just reinforces that they're the leader in this space. When you have uh, you know, uh, a traditional automaker like Ford saying, I'm going to use their standard. And in their products coming in 2025, Ford's actually going to adopt their North American charging standard, which is a big deal. But secondly, you know, they also get they qualify now for the IRA uh, funding from the government to help build out, further build out their charging infrastructure. So, again, they're getting federal uh, assistance, if you will, to, to aid their business. And, you know, I think one of the most ironic things is, you know, prior to this, the uh, traditional automakers were buying EV tax credits from Tesla. Well, now that's waning. Guess what? Now they're going to start to be able to gain some uh, new revenues and profitability from providing, you know, the charging stations. So I think it's uh, there's a lot of advantages there. The only disadvantage is, is listen, if you're in a cyber truck and you're in a line behind a Ford F-150 or a Mach E, <laughs> you know, that's going to be a bit of a problem. Um, Ross, you know, there had been some, I would argue, in the industry who were. Uh, bringing their adoption curve, their long-term adoption curve, down a little bit, maybe because less urgency, sticker shock, gas prices are cheap. But I wonder if we really do get this uh, interoperability, if those curves need to be raised again. Well, I think one of the things is is that when they started the charging thing, they wanted to have one standard across the entire world. And a lot of people balked at Tesla standard and didn't adopt it. So this is a reversal of something from many years ago that was ultimately – probably a mistake for these companies. So Ford adopting it is really good. But what really is going to happen is the new model for Tesla charging are these massive charging areas like they put in Santa Monica with 150 stalls. So the worry about like cyber trucks being behind Fords and, and all that I think is legitimate, maybe short term, but longer term, there's going to be tons of charging stations. And so this is a win-win for the climate. It's for EVs, for Ford, for Tesla. Um, and it will help mass adoption of EVs on a much greater scale. So, you know, I'm very, very excited yeah. about this because ultimately our goal is to see EVs become a dominant, you know, vehicle uh, uh, in the global, you know, 
uh, driving world. Now we know this is great for Tesla as well. Third party supercharging access to other auto manufacturers will add to Tesla's revenue, of course. Also Tesla licensing the FSD, and I'm guessing here, also collaborating with other automakers will also add to Tesla's revenue. Well, the goal in mind for Elon is always making sustainable energy for all. Well, the media is always asking um, the why is he doing this? Elon is a person that is working his butt off to take humanity to Mars one day while knowing he will not live long enough to see this happen. Now that's who Elon Musk is, one of a kind. However, it makes me think about all these Tesla products. Of course, Tesla will create revenue in all as they should. However, it will not be as dramatically as some might think. All of this will help speeding up the process towards the future. And yes, Tesla is not done building charging stations. Tesla owners don't need to worry about delays. And maybe we can start looking at the situation from a less selfish perspective. Personally, I am excited for this decision Tesla and Ford made. I loved seeing Jim Farley being so optimistic and excited. So what is your opinion about Tesla and Ford collaborating like this in their charging stations? You can leave it in the comment section also. Um, thank you so much for watching. And if you like it, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.